gonna start pulling the skid out. We're gonna relieve the springs with a 10 and a 13. Once the springs are relieved, then we'll pull out the 22 and 13 millimeter bolt here with the third, we'll put the 22 wrench on the back and a 13 millimeter here. Once you've pulled out the, uh, or loosened the bolts here, you can release the spring down. And what you wanna do is you wanna take it off of the uh, um, tension adjuster. Then you wanna pull it forward and bring it in front of it, and then you can set it back up on, on uh, the holder in the front of the skid here. It just makes it a lot easier to collapse the skid and pull the skid out. So you're gonna bring the skid down until it just touches. Then you're gonna pull these bolts and put the 22 millimeter on the back. Do that on both sides. So what you want to do on the front bolts, you want to crack one loose and then pull the other one out on, on the opposite side. So we already cracked the other side loose and we're going to pull this one out. When you pull out the opposite side, you can see the skittle shift forward. And then what you can do is you can reach up in here and pull off, pull off the bar on the front of Took a little bit of messing around to pull it out, but what you do is basically pull back on the skid and you pull the bar out that supports the front. And it's not solid mounted, it's actually a slider uh, front W arm. And then you pull that out. From there, you basically can just collapse the skid and pull it, pull it right out. As you can see, we had to shimmy the track a little bit, pull back on the track a little bit, and shift it out the side, and the whole skid is now out. Once we have the uh, skid out, I go through and replace bearings. You can hear those bearings are bad. I check the high fax. This has DuPonts on it. They're in pretty good shape. I check for chipped wheels, bad wheels. So I'll go through everything and replace all the wheels uh, or bearings or what it needs. Then I will grease it. There's a grease circ here. There's a grease circ inside there. <clears throat> and there's two in the back. You can see those there. And then once I get the skid all done, get all the bearings and stuff, I'll set that on the side and go through more of my maintenance that I do. I had the shocks rebuilt last year, didn't put a lot of miles on this year. But you can see the shocks do take a beating underneath there. Okay, we're gonna pull one of the wheels off. I got an eight millimeter on the outside, 10 millimeter on the inside. And I'm just gonna pull that right off. <clears throat> And kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. It's pretty simple. The wheel themselves look like they're in great shape. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pull out this clip here in the center with uh, pliers made for pulling them out. Pull the clip out and then I will take it to my press. Um, I used to pound them out, but I got a bearing uh, Bearing pushers that push the bearings out and I just use a press because it's quite a bit easier All right, I'm at the press We're gonna push out the bearing in the wheel. I already took out the, the clip These are 6004 bearings um, They have two seals on both sides and they're packed with grease. I use SKF or uh, FAG bearings and if you're not sure um, basically on a sidewinder the wheel bearings are the the uh, 6004s on small idler wheels and um, if you're unsure you can always pull the bearing and, and read on the bearing I keep all these in stock if I don't need to do the wheels I do the bearings only and as you can see I have a press here Once the clip is out, 
and they pop right out of them and they come out super super easy I guess it's, I know some people use a hammer but this is so much nicer bearings out garbage get the new bearing I got a a little kit that you can get from Harbor Freight that has a bearing and seals um, basically uh, to push out seals and, and bearings it's it's actually a pretty cool little deal uh, it bolts on but I like to have it so I can quick change it I'll bring this press up get the new bearing in there drop her down See, once it has a little resistance, you know it's at the bottom. Sip it on the side, new bearings in. And I like to do is I like to take a little awl and clean the races out uh, where the clip is going to pop back in. Let me grab that for you. Quick here, clean all this off, clean all the clip off a little bit. Take this all, you can do it before, you can do it after, you can do both because sometimes you push it, you actually push a little bit of stuff into it. Clean it out really good. That way, when you bring the clip in, you know that that clip is in there in the right spot. Gets that right in there. I don't know if you can see that really good. And she pops right into the groove, just like brand new. I'm going to go through all the wheels and do all the wheels. Uh, I may fire the camera up to show you the rear wheels a little bit, but that's about it for doing the bearings. I'm going to be pulling these center wheels out. You got a 17 millimeter, 13 millimeter. Once you pull the nut and the bolt out, you can li basically lift this up. And there's a little cup that retains this wheel. That'll slide off and you can change the bearing. You got to be careful because there is a washer in here. Don't lose track of that washer. And then I'll go to the back wheels. To do the back wheels, I usually pull this shaft out, loosen this, and you can see I don't have my outside wheels, but pretty simple. Take the bolt out. If you spread that just a little bit, you'll be able to pull, you'll be able to drop the rear wheel out of it and then change the bearings. Now these don't, this does not have the tri-hub, uh, but it's just about the same to get it out. And I'm gonna get, kind of show you how this goes together. So basically, what I did is I took all this off. And if you can see here, this is where you're, you gotta watch these. Can't lose those. Uh, these are the washers I talked about earlier. So you put the, and I have multiple, oops. Let me try that again. So basically, push your spacer on. Put that in there like that you can take this one okay put that in there like that bring this up slide that on watch that washer you can see the washer right there bring that together and then it will drop right back in there between the rails and you can put your bolt back in pretty simple the bolt goes in from the side right across this this arm always has to be up when you put it back to when you put it back in the machine for now it doesn't much matter because they don't have the springs attached put the nut on the outside 
and basically you screw her back together. You got a 13 millimeter and a 17 millimeter, and uh, and that's it for the center bearings. Um, all the other ones are relatively easy to pull out. Um, I'm going to move on to the rear axle. So here I'm going to pull this rear axle out. I got it loose a little bit already. So I'm going to take this guy apart real quick. That side. Pull that apart. that on the side, pull the rear bolts, set those on the side, it's a little tighter than I wanted, impact a little bit. There we go. There was the impact. Basically, if you just pull this apart, just a little bit, you can take the take her right out. And try not to drop anything in the process. So basically, on this, you can just take her right apart like that. Set these parts on the side, and I can replace the bearings. Okay, we're going to pull these upper top wheels uh, and replace the bearings. I got about 7,800 miles on this snowmobile, and in order to get the bearings off, they're pressed on. So you got to pull this guy. This is your cam uh, for the suspension. Make sure that you do one at a time so you can kind of get this in the right place every time. <clears throat> Little plastic washer, pull that off. And we got this little Trekkie tool that came from Barna Parts, which assists you on pulling this off. So the first thing that I do I take his little guide and I set a couple holes because you have to drill holes in these you have to drill holes in these wheels just a hole to, for the puller no big deal the holes don't hurt anything see how that works I, he's got a nice little guide that slips on there. Then this piece goes on the inside. Pulls on the wheel. This piece goes on the outside. Goes through the holes. the holes and uh, basically put the nuts on the other side uh, once I get it set up I'll turn you back on so I have the tool on and what happens is you you start to walk it little by little I use a small impact you got to really watch that inside clip because if it starts to pull that inside clip you could actually pull the clip right through that was one thing that I found this one actually I I walked it little by little, real slow, and I heard it pop. But if, if you don't hear that pop, really start to watch that inside clip. And um, you could be doing damage to the wheels. Basically, that's how it works. It pulls it right off, just slicker than snot. Um, so now, I, once I pull both wheels off, then I can do the bearings. And then I'll show you how I put them back on. Okay, so I got this wheel bearing replaced. 
Uh, these upper wheel bearings are 6006s, FAG bearings. Uh, now to put this back on because it is a slight press, I actually have a bushing that is perfect to the inside race so it doesn't put pressure on the bearings. And you just tap it right on. And then put the arm back together the way you took it off and basically that's how it works.